my name is Deborah Todd. I've been privileged to serve for the past 10 years as a justice on the Supreme Court. When Miranda was going over those dates and numbers uh, of my, uh, on my resume, I became a little nervous because I know there's a math professor here, <laughs> and if you add all those numbers up, it, it means I'm, uh, I'm very experienced. <laughs> but I guess that, that's a good thing. So I am signing up for another 10 years on the Supreme Court, if you will vote yes to retain me. I have truly enjoyed my service on the court, uh, someone asked me if I would briefly talk about the, the court structure in Pennsylvania. Our courts in Pennsylvania are shaped like a pyramid. Our structure is laid on the foundation with our magisterial district courts. And then the next level up is our common police court system. That's our trial courts. So Clarion County, along with all the other counties, is represented by a trial court, the Court of Common Pleas. Then the next level is our intermediate appellate court system. That is the Superior Court and the Commonwealth Court. And you're going to hear some things about those courts by the other candidate representatives. And then at the tippy top is the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. That's where I'm sitting. And we have seven justices. Our uh, duty is to decide the um, appeals that we choose most of them are discretionary from uh, the 2,000 or more petitions for allowance of appeal that we received. We choose the cases that are the most important um, to decide for the whole Commonwealth, and we are the last word on what the, uh, how the law is uh, interpreted in Pennsylvania. We decide constitutional questions. We decide uh, matters such as reapportionment, redistricting, and uh, ultimately, if it's a big issue in Pennsylvania, it ends up on our desks. Um, we're also responsible for administering the unified judicial system, and uh, part of that work, it's our constitutional prescription that we administer the 67 counties and the 60 judicial districts. And that allows us, in addition to the kind of mundane part of court administration, to take on special initiatives. And I have had the wonderful opportunity to lead our court's elder justice movement. As a member of our Supreme Court, I formed a statewide elder law task force in 2014. And we had 38 experts in elder justice get together and meet for um, a period of 18 months. And we put our heads together and came up with a report and recommendations with 130 recommendations on how to make life better for Pennsylvania seniors. Uh, Pennsylvania is the fourth oldest state in the nation in terms of the percentage of elders. And uh, we face such challenges from uh, financial exploitation to neglect and abuse of elders, guardianship abuses, power of attorney abuses, and it's incumbent on the courts to, to take steps to make sure that we're dealing with those issues and making, uh, making our commonwealth safer for our elders. So I hope to continue with that work. I'm also the Supreme Court's representative to our, our veterans courts all over the state. We have 20 veterans courts, two more in for formation. And uh, if any of you want to know anything about our veterans courts, I'm happy to stick around and talk to you about them. I'm very proud of our veterans courts. We take uh, individuals coming back from sometimes multiple deployments in Iraq and Afghanistan, and they come back with PTSD, traumatic brain injury, addiction, alcoholism, depression, and that causes them at times to get involved in the criminal justice system. The Veterans Court movement is uh, designed to address that need and help these individuals who have served our country honorably get back on track. Um, finally, I've been an advocate for children. I'm passionate about protecting Pennsylvania's children from abuse. I'm a past president of Pittsburgh Action Against Rape. In that capacity, I learned that uh, at this point, we have nearly 600 children each year being counseled by Pittsburgh Action Against Rape, having been the victims of sexual violence. And uh, that's just Pittsburgh. So if you look at the state as a whole, there are thousands of individual children who have been victimized. And I'm working hard um, to educate the public about that, to encourage people to uh, call Childline. I published on um, adequate sentencing for sex offenders of children, and I 
intend to continue uh, my work in that regard as well. If you vote yes, uh, the, the question on the ballot for me, although I'm a lifelong Democrat, you elected me as a Democrat, it's a separate question. I'm not listed under the uh, open seats um, because I'm up for retention, which means it's simply a yes, no vote. Sounds easy, but some people do lose retention races. So it's important that uh, I have your help to get the message out that people need to look for the separate question. Shall Deborah Todd be retained as a justice on the Supreme Court? And I, I do hope you will vote yes.